All right, and welcome to the Crypto Hippo Trading Channel. My name is Shyler, and I'm a full-time Elliott Wave trader in the crypto markets. In this video, we're going to be diving into a Bitcoin technical analysis update from an Elliott Wave perspective and taking a look at the bull and the bear counts and where the validation and invalidation targets are as well. We're going to do a quick recap on the last video uploaded as well, see how that played out, do a quick... Uh, link into the discord as well take a look at some updates in there and then we're going to jump over into the actual charts and take a look at today's analysis let's dive in all right and first and foremost we've got our video up here it was uploaded on the 17th so two days ago and now normally Sundays I take off, but we had our move today. So it uh, it goes without saying that, you know, need to jump on and do a little update, make sure we're on point for our targets and so forth. So the play that we had in this video here was uh, buy entry in between 89 to 91.42. And then we're looking for targets around uh, 81.57, 8,040, 7,700. So the question in, is in this video that we're going to dive into is whether or not these targets still hold, if we need to make some adjustments to them as well and what we're looking at in regards to the, to those targets and uh, the bull and the bear counts. So uh, the stop loss here was at 92.50. All that would have held up. We can jump over to the charts here. And looking at our high, our high peak here, we uh, got in right about 91.67 here is where we got in for the high. So overall, it really played out really beautiful. And uh, we're going to be looking at targets today on the downside here. But we're going to do it in a manner where we do it zoom out to our higher time frames make sure that we're doing a recap on the monthly the weekly the daily four hour and 15 minute cycles so that we have our same sequence that we're sticking in order with there uh and then we're uh, also going to dive in over here to the discord where we had a update as we were picking the top of the move last night uh where we were basically looking at some kind of just fine-tuning those targets so as always in the Discord, more exclusive videos, updates, so forth than what I can do on YouTube. So if you haven't joined or if you haven't heard of it, go check it out in the link in the description below at CryptoHippoProfiteers.com and you can learn more about it. Okay, so uh, with that being said, let's go zoom out to our higher time frames. We've got the monthly here. You can actually see this red dotted line is our monthly resistance, which we came up to and we were seeing some pushback on it right now. That actually matched up damn near perfect with our uh, with our target as well. So pretty good overall. That's sitting at 91.58. We've got two supports in regards to horizontal supports here. We've got one down here for the, uh, the monthly at 75.56. Uh, nothing that we need to get concerned about just yet. And then we've got this move here as well. On a monthly standpoint, we've got right about 82.50. I'm going to actually snap to that here real quick. Right there. Okay, so make sure I'm on that. All right, so 8,300 is what that's saying. I just want to, yep, snap into it, just making sure that that's accurate. So 8,300 is actually, from a monthly standpoint, we've got these two candle uh, open and close here. So, and then on a weekly, we've got this one sitting underneath that at 8,171. So those are going to actually act as pretty strong support levels. We're going to see how that matches up as well with some confluence on the smaller time frames. So in regards to that, we've got a nice looking monthly candle here, but we do have 11 days roughly uh left in the month for this to either come down or try and come back and back test these supports we'll see how this uh is going to be impacted by the weekly closes so moving down to our weekly time frame here and the weekly here so we've got about half of the sell-off on the candle right now we've got today is our weekly close so we're seeing that uh pressure come back down let's see what they can do in the next 15 minutes is our weekly close here. Probably not a whole lot going to happen. Probably going to close right around this $8,700 range, which is fine. That's pretty neutral overall. There's nothing that there's really fighting for in regards to EMAs, things like that. We're above the 21. We're above the 50. The we, the larger time frames here are looking pretty good overall. Now, when we take a look at, and we're going to do this on the four hour, so I'll leave that for there. Uh, we've got all, yeah, above all the EMAs, everything looks really good on the higher time frames right now. So but as always, the smaller time frames are going to lead into the higher ones. And the last video was calling for why things looked more bearish. And we referenced in regards to that because of the lack of RSI divergences in the first wave structures leading in this diagonal that we've got right now. And so, and I still hold by that in regards to that being bearish um, supporting evidence as to why this could justify a bearish count instead of just a bullish one. So 
And we're gonna dive down to in the smaller time frames and be able to take a look at this anyways. So, but on the higher time frames, looking good, but they always give us some, you know, lagging intel. The smaller time frames always lead to the higher ones. All right, let's go ahead and let's shoot down here. Um, I, that weekly support, FYI, was sitting at that 81.74. Okay, so now we've got the daily here. You can see I've drawn the trend lines up on the top here that we've broken a couple different ways, okay? And both of them we're sitting above right now. In fact, we could even argue that this is a good back test of them, okay? And that we can hold the support here. We can maybe move sideways, do a flat correction, and continue on. And I've got two in interesting counts for you. And... In the last video, we talked about a fast track perma bull count is how I described it, basically, where we just shot right through this. We got an extended uh, third wave of this entire structure and we broke the ascending wedge out the top. OK, that was like a fast track bull count. Then we've got just the regular bull count where everybody's seeing this as a leading diagonal and ascending wedge. It's going to pull back, retrace a normal ABC, and it's just going to print the perfect, you know, textbook example of a leading diagonal. And we're going to continue our bull run. And then we had the bearish count. And so and then the bearish count was that with this was sitting at either a I got to get that magnet tool off uh, and a B and the ending diagonal was a C. OK, and the biggest the biggest thing here is the wave structure inside of this diagonal in order to help us confirm whether it's an ending diagonal, which is what we find in C's or a leading diagonal, which is what we find in first waves. OK, so with that being the case, a lot of evidence down here does suggest that this is actually a ending diagonal for a C wave. And that's what the last video kind of referenced on in regards to having more of a bearish outlook on it. Now, the other outlook on it as well due to the lack of divergence in these wave structures on smaller time frames as well, is that this could be a complex structure that just is simply a WXY. Now, the one issue with the WXY with a zigzag in here for an ABC is that the Y wave shouldn't really hit anything above a 1.618. And if we dive into this, we were getting really close to encroaching on that. And in fact, on a log scale, we hit it perfectly, but on a linear, we broke it just by wicks. So candle closes stayed within that range. So it holds, it, it's a good thing that we corrected where we did. We, you know, ideally we want this daily candle closed down here. Most likely it will, given that there's only 15 minutes on it. So everything's closed underneath that 1.618 and on the log scale, we've hit it perfectly. So the WXY is on the table, this completely holds. The problem with the WXY is that we need to figure out a count for this garbage back here because this mess right here just doesn't flow very well into this. This is a good zigzag leading diagonal, drop out the bottom, impulse down, hit target perfect. In regards to this is an okay count. You try and add this to it, things get ugly. And so with that being said, from an LA wave standpoint, this makes a lot better A, B, and a C with an ending diagonal for the C wave. So all of that's still on the table and we can address when, obviously, if we move past this 1.618, the WXY is going to go out the window and reality is even with the expanded flat here, no more than the highest we've seen for an expanded flat was this one over here with a 2.618 extension. So, and that would put us upwards of 97.40. Well, if we do that, more than likely we're it's not going to be an expanded flat. This diagonal right here is what needed to break, is what needed to fall out. So us going up and breaking up and over this previous high by over a 1.236 to 1.382 is what will be the invalidation point for the bears. So what, what does that mean in maybe more simple terms here is once we pivot off this bottom, once we get our A wave, okay, and this is what it would look like, get an A wave like that, that's our A wave, this B wave and a C. So this move here, if we break above this previous high by 0.236 to 1.382, in fact, you know what? In fact, altogether, well, mm, I take it back because we can move down correctively and we can make a complex structure out of it. So we can allow for the expanded B wave. I was going to say if we broke previous side all together, it just goes out the window, but we can move down correctively. So with that being said, we would look for a, if this is just our A wave here, okay, then we would look for a B wave that would go no higher than 94.82. So no higher than 9,500 bucks. 
would be where this B wave could go and we could basically move down correctively in a complex structure. So that's completely on the tables in regards to that. So if we move up past $9,500, then I'll give it to the bulls to take the reins from there and take us into our new bull market um, and have the low completely 100% established. So that's my bias and outlook on that in regards to us finding the bottom or whatnot is a move over 9,500 would confirm that. Now, even though that aggressive perma bull count, which was on the table as a extended third wave, so it looked like this, one, two, three going all the way up here to like a 2.618, and then a fourth wave and a fifth like that, that was our like fast track uh, bull run count here. Well, this would have been our breakdown would have been a wave one, two, a three, a four, and a five, something like that a little bit higher there, okay, is how, how we would have moved along these lines here in regards to this. So this one, in all reality, m goes out the window because of where we're at right now in regards to where this correction came back down. It's just not going to happen in this flow structure anymore. And so because of that, the other one that opens up at least would be an extended fifth. So in what an extended fifth is, and that's what I actually had these pretty drawings down here for was to show you guys the different counts on how Elliot kind of works on what we could expect here. So this was the fast track bull count where we just broke that top of the channel just really fast. We do it. We, and thus we make an extended third wave. We come back fourth and then a fifth. Okay. So that's the one we were looking at the correction that came back back now, which is what we were looking for, for an, a diagonal. This one right here is in play right now. We're currently in the a wave. So we're looking for a B up and a C down. Okay, this B up can go pretty high, can even be expanded like we just talked about. That's why the invalidation for it is 9,500. Okay, so, and then the C wave would come back down. Typically, these retrace back to wave two, which puts us at 7,700, but we're going to talk about that in regards to retracements here in just a minute. So even though this the doors closed on this one here, the one that does open up is going to be this one here. And the reason for that is because I'm going to make this just like this drawing here for an ending diagonal. Look at this one right here. Okay, so it's just a little bit bigger. And what we're looking at here is this is that fifth wave that we're seeing right now here in the purple would be a wave one and a two is the pullback where we are now. So if we still want to maintain really bullish sentiment and we want to hold that channel support that we're on top of right now, and we don't want to give the bears any chance of, you know, even coming back into that channel, then this is our Elliott wave that we're going to see is we're going to see an extended fifth wave come out of this. Instead, where we bounce off of a 0.618 to 0.5 retrace of the first wave right there. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right here, because this would be our wave one here. So we're going to just take this fib retracement and just sink it right up to the bottom there. So this would be our wave one of our five wave of our extended fifth wave. So we'd be looking for uh, a third, a fourth and a fifth like that. And snap that on there somewhere. And then the larger degree count would be this one here, where we have a one, a two, a three, a four, and then your extended fifth. So the third wave hit a one over a one to one extension of wave one. So it's not the shortest wave. I've already checked all that, made sure that it follows suit with all of this. So this would be what we'd be looking for in regards to a very fast track uh, Elliott wave. So as always, we're looking at both scenarios. How do we know when this one is going to be valid? Move over 9,500. You can probably expect us to be moving pretty high up into uh, breaking this previous high and going towards about 10.3, 10.4K, and then maybe further on from there. So if we get an extended fifth, and this is what we do, these typically are very harsh retracements that will result in a ABC that comes back to the start of wave two of the fifth degree here. So we would basically come right on back to about $8,400, $8,500 to where we are right now if we just end up projecting on from here. So this is our fast track uh, bull count here. Uh, confirmation is at 9,500 uh, when we take a look at that. So I'll put that on the on the table here. So basically right about, right about there is our confirmation for this to play out 100%. Uh, the other thing, I mean, the higher this B wave retraces in here, the more likely this is too to play out, okay? So that's, uh, that's our options there in regards to Elliott waves. So if I take all of this off the table and we take a look at just the leading diagonal, which has broken now, and I just do a fast drawing of what we're looking at here, this structure, just like that, we had an ending diagonal in the fifth wave here. So we just hit our target for 
before this ending diagonal inside of this ending diagonal. So this was an ending fifth wave here. And we just hit the target of that, of breaking that, okay? So expecting a bounce here, I'm guessing this is most likely should trail sideways like this. Since we're so bullish, the sentiment, everybody's bullish right now. Even though we're correcting back, people are gonna eat this up. It's expected. So I'm guessing these retracements will be deeper. And so we'll get more like bull flags rather than triangles. That's just my opinion, could be wrong. We can be prepared for any of it, but either way, we should get a B wave here and then we should get one more leg down for just a general, generic ABC. That's gonna put us back into our support areas, which are referenced on those higher time frames as well. So we've got that 8170 right there. We've got that 82, what is that, 80, 83 sitting there. And and we've got the 77 here. Now, if we take two, if we take a fib retracement from low to high, given that this is a five wave structure that's completed, we'd also be looking for, you know, pretty basic 0.5 retracement, maybe 0.618. If we come back underneath the support area here, which is also the 0.5, we're giving the bears a lot more of an upper hand here. The higher we stay above up into these areas and take a short retracement on this, the much more bullish we are. So given that we are looking at this structure here, and we know where these this channel supports are at. And these are on the extreme side of it. I realize that people are gonna be drawing these all different ways that show that we broke them out here, that we were in wedges. That's fine. I'm just taking the extreme side of it just to show where we should really honestly hold the most support at uh, if we wanna be re really bullish. So with that being the case, you know, coming back in, in, in regards to these support areas here, we've got the daily 200 now sitting down here at the 8170. So those areas are going to be pretty good support levels way before we get anywhere near 77, you know, or even $8,000. So if the bulls really want to show their dominance, they won't let it go underneath. In my opinion, they're not going to let it go back underneath 8,100 or even $8,000. So we should have a shallow retracement here if they really want to take it up and out. Otherwise, if the bears want to take back the rings, they're going to bring us down into that 0.618 territory or even 0.5. These to me, no matter what, whether it's bullish or bearish, are, are gonna be great opportunities to still play bounces on. Um, so if we're lucky enough to even get down into these ranges, then sweet. And those are gonna change up slightly depending on log or linear scale as well by about $100 each, okay? So on linear, you're gonna be $100 higher, sitting at about 7,800 and 7,500, whereas log, you're gonna be at 76 and 74, okay? so. Those are going to be the 0.5 and 0.618 retraces overall. And I would suspect that in the short term, we'll just flag out here. Anytime we get a big move like this, we typically consolidate for a little bit. So I just expect because we're bullish, it's going to get bought up. So we should just get an ascending channel here. One more break out the bottom. That'd give us a one-to-one -one extension, most likely right around into this really good support zone sitting in between uh, 8170 to 8300. So that would allow for a bigger bounce like that. And either we can continue uh, a trend in that manner and uh, get bullish. I personally think that we will just do another three wave correction and then come back down again. I think that personally, we're going to do a larger move like that. And it's going to be just a little bit slower. I don't think that we're going to go on a huge rally for a third wave just off of one ABC. I think it's going to take a few of them. And, uh, and that's fine. So we'll basically consolidate on top of the channel in that manner. And then we can zoom on out back up into the bull run there. Coming back down into 0 0.5, 0 0.618 and doing it fast, that's bearish. That shows much more sentiment in that manner. The other thing that we're gonna be looking for too for the bearish count, since they are on the table and they're not invalidated, is impulse. So if this is wave one, two, what's this C wave is gonna have five waves in it. Is it gonna be corrective or is it gonna be impulsive? If you know, if it's gonna go straight down to that, then that could be very bad news for us in regards to the bulls. So that's what we're looking for on the table, you guys, uh, playing it step by step. It's a daily content channel here. So honestly, everything I talked about is going to take weeks to play out. And uh, I'll just keep you guys updated in the on the daily uh, daily videos. So I hope that's uh, that's a uh, good information for you guys. Hope you find it valuable. Definitely smash the likes if so and uh, help share the video. And uh, if you're not subscribed, then definitely consider subscribing as well. I'll see you guys for the next update. Much love, hippos.